The following content is provided by a I Am Refocused radio contributor. Pastor Vera McEwen with Love God Ministries will be sharing today's message. And now, here is your host, Pastor Vera McEwen. In our last message, the message titled, The Company You Keep. I asked you a question. And the question was, what are you creating and with whom? What are you creating and with whom? And then we spoke of creating with God. For when you create with God, God breathes the life into your creation. And at the end of that message, you might have asked yourself, why do I need to create with God? The question today is why? Why create? Why create with God? Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 45. We create with God because Isaiah 45 tells us in verse 5 that God is the Lord. And there is no other apart from God. We learned last week, too, that there are no other gods in Habakkuk, right? Here we are, recognizing there is no other God, and we will create with God because there are no other gods. Now, take a look just a few verses down to verse Seven. When we create with God, we recognize that we are creating with God that created light and created darkness. And if you look at that second portion of verse seven, God says that those who create with God, those that create with the one God, the only God, have prosperity, a prosperity that lasts. And if you drop down to verse 14, the second portion of 14 in Isaiah chapter 45, what will you read? You'll read that God is always with you. And the God that we serve is with you, according to Isaiah 45, whether you acknowledge God or not. Why create with God? Because you have light when you create with God. Because you have prosperity when you create with God. Because with God's help, you can create anything. Now, turn with me to the song. There are so many reasons why we create with God rather than alone. You see, if you look at Psalm 40, verse 1, it speaks of the psalmist crying out. And we said in Isaiah that God is with you whether you acknowledge God or not. And here the psalmist says, I cried out. And what happens when the psalmist cries out in the Psalm 40, verse 1, it says, the Lord, the Lord God, the one God heard. You see, when we join in community, in communion, in the company of God as we create, God will hear us when we cry out. And not only that, the psalmist continues and says, when I was in the very pit, the very lowness of life, God saw. Because God is with you whether you acknowledge God or not. I challenge you to acknowledge God this 
this day so that whatever you create will be in light and prosper. And when you cry out, you will not only be heard, but you will be seen in the lowest of pits. And the psalmist goes on to say, Braylon, what does the psalmist go on to say? That God will lift you up out of that pit and place you on the rock. But it's not just any old rock. And remember back in January, we began this service series around foundation and that being a firm foundation. It's my hope that you listeners also listen to the music that we provide. Firm foundation was the music for this week. And it says in the psalm, Psalm 40, it says that God will lift you up out of the pit when you cry out because God sees you and put you on a rock. But it's not just any rock. It is a firm foundation. And not only that, but placed on this firm foundation up out of the slimy pit, no longer crying out, God will place a song in your mouth so that you can sing the praises of God for the God that lifts you up out of the pit, that hears you when you cry. Why create with God? Because when you create with God, you create in light. Your creation prospers and God hears you, whether you are acknowledged him or not, God sees you and God will lift you up out of the pit, placing you on the rock that is a firm foundation, adding music to your creation. Why create with God? Turn with me to 2 Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we read in verse 15 that those who live, those who have been changed, reformed, transformed through the blood of Jesus Christ, those who live should no longer live. Now, see, this is where it gets, uh, this is where it gets a little hard to hear. But you see, those who choose to remain, and I may lose some of you, some of you listening on Spreaker, I may lose some of you listening on Facebook, I may lose some of you watching on YouTube right now, because it says here in verse 15 of chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians, those who live should no longer live for what does it say there? Braylon, what does it say? No longer live for themselves. Yikes. We live in a selfish community, one that thinks of self most of the time. And yet here we're asked that when we create with God, that we are to live not just to create things for ourselves. but we should live for one another and for Christ who lives within us. Now, look a little further down at verse 16. It says, when you are transformed, when you begin to create with God in mind, when you create for others, not thinking only of yourself, you begin to see things differently. You no longer see things from the worldly view. And that's why I love the song Firm Foundation that we've been playing this week. Because when we see things not through a worldly view, the world doesn't understand how we see. They don't understand how we communicate. They don't understand how we can find joy in chaos is what the song says. I love it when 
The song psalmist sings, I have a testimony. You need to listen to this song from foundation. It can be found on our page. Love God Ministries, ELCA, Facebook. Firm foundation. He says, I have a testimony. And I love what he says about this testimony. He says that rain came. The winds blew, the rain came, the storm came, is basically what the psalmist is saying. But I had joy in all of this. Because like the psalmist in chapter 40, I am placed firmly on this firm foundation that is the rock. The rock that sees no longer through a worldly view that changes my view from a worldly view so that I don't just create for myself. And then as we continue through this passage from verse 17 through verse 20, there's a word that pops up five times. Five times. Can you see that word popping out in your Bible? We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're looking at verses 18 through 20. What is that word? It says, maybe reconciled in your Bible. Maybe reconciling. Maybe reconcil reconciliation. Maybe reconcile. That word in the Greek is kata laloxontos. Mm. And it means more than just reconcile. It means a change. It means a transformation, a changing, an exchanging what we have now for something new, something better, an inheritance that will make us prosper. An inheritance that includes something other than just ourselves. Why do we create with God? Because when we create with God, it's an exchange, a change that happens. So as we read through this passage, I want you to change every word that says reconcile at the beginning to change. All this is from God who changed us. All this is from God who changed us. Catalaxuntos. All this is from God who changed us, gave us the ministry. Gave you, gave me, gave all of us the ministry of what? Change. When we create, we create change. God was changing the world. God was changing the world to a world full of people who live like Christ, not thinking of self. And we are committed because God is committed to us this message of what? This message of change. And it ends with be changed to God. Mm. Sounds a little different now. And for those who remain, there is a beauty in all of this, right? Because if we look down, it says, these are the righteous. And we learned righteousness in Greek last week, and that was the king. We have changed into this righteousness, these people who are acquitted. We learned that the K means acquitted. It means cleansed. It means saved as well. 
That's who you are. Now, the good news is if you chose to stay and continue to listen, why create change? Why create with God? Well, turn with you me to Matthew. Matthew chapter 25. And we're going to hone in on verse 34 first. It says, because your inheritance, all that you have, all that you create. And again, remember that your creation is now filled with light. It prospers. It comes about to be whatever God with you choose. Is the kingdom. And in this separation that Jesus performs between sheep and goats, Jesus says something, and it's repeated three times in different ways. And Jesus gives us a prescription, and I want you to write this prescription down. Write it in your heart. It begins with G. And Jesus says, you gave me, you who are selfish, You who choose not just themselves to create newness, to create something that will prosper in light, that you give, that Jesus forgive. Jesus says, you gave me something to drink when I was thirsty. And the response of the righteous, the response of those who are cleansed, the response of those who... mm, the light of God it says that they respond with when did we see you thirsty and give you something to drink and that word in the Greek is Edom. when did we see and Edom is more than just see I remember learning Greek with my daughter at a very early age and one of the first words that we learned was I see, and the word is blepo, I see. But this word here in the Greek is not blepo or blep, it is idon. And so in our Bible, it may say, when did we see, but it really means, when did we perceive that there was a need? And I challenge you, when do you perceive there is a need for your neighbor next door? When do you perceive that there's a need for your friend down the street? When do you perceive that you can create in light and prosperity with God? So it says here, when did we perceive and give you something to drink? And Jesus' response is, whenever you do this for the least, and who are the least? He says, my brothers and sisters, but I tell you that we recognize the least as the orphan, the person who is ostracized in your office, who's talked about behind their back, the person who's being gossiped, the person who is being pushed down, the least of these. And God, through Jesus, speaks in this prescription. So the first letter of the prescription is what? G, that's right, forgive. The second letter of the prescription that Jesus gives us is the letter I. Write that down. And Jesus says, you, you invited me as a stranger into your home. And again, it says, well, when did we see Eve Owen? When did we perceive you as a stranger? When did we see you begging for money on the side of the road and invite you into our home? When did we see you needing someone who could help lift them up out of their garden because they were screaming for help to take them inside and call their wife? When did we see you perceive your need as a stranger and invite you in? Now, I got to stop here because there's a narrative from my family. I'll never forget my mom telling me this narrative. And she said, I'll never forget the day I came home 
And you have to understand, my dad was a person who would invite anyone to our home. And my mom said there was a day when I came home, long day at work. My mother worked at the VA hospital. Long day at work, she comes home. And I can imagine my mother wearing her white dress because she wore a white dress. She was a nurse's aide and she would stand very proud. They called her Mac at the VA. And I can imagine my mother coming in from a hard day of work. And of course her hair was so beautiful, just laid to the side, even after a long day of work. And Mac would walk up the stairs in our home. And I can imagine her going into her master suite. But as she approached, she could hear something. She said, yeah, I heard my shower on. And I went into my bedroom and there was a bum off the street. And I ran downstairs and I talked to your dad and I'm like, what are you doing? Who is in our house? When did I see you a stranger and invite you in? My dad invited him into our home. The I in the prescription is invite. Like I said, it gets a little deep here, right? It's not just about me and creating something for myself. It's about creating something for the least as well. And Jesus ends this discussion by saying, I was sick. I was sick, infirmed, and imprisoned. And you, what does it say there? Visited. The last letter is the letter V for visit. You visited me. That is our prescription as creators. That is our prescription as creators who create with the newness of life in our being. And when we create that change, all that we touch, all that we do prospers in light. Whether we acknowledge God or not, God is with us. When I think of creating change in our environment, I'm reminded I'm reminded of the giving spirit, G-I-V spirit, the one that gives, the one that invites, the one that visits. That is the one that creates change. And why should we create with God this change? Because when we do, it is the gift of life for all those around us. I was watching a video on LinkedIn. And the video described a man who had received several security alerts because he had cameras outside of his house. And so he went to the cameras to find out what was going on. You see, every time someone would enter his driveway and stay a little while, he would flash, get a security alert. And he kept getting these security alerts. And so he checked the footage. He checked the footage on his cameras. And he decided to set up a GI V that creates a gift. He grabbed some chalk and created an outline in his driveway to capture the attention 
of the person sending off this security alert. And he was drawing in his driveway this message, this message for this person that kept creating an alarm on his security footage. The next time that person came through, the parent eyes lit up. And this little child on this bike who had been riding in this person's driveway now saw a chalk outline of a little road that he could follow. And so he rode his bike a little shaky, right? Because it was a curvy little road through this road and he rode it a couple of times. But that's not where it is. You see, we are to give to the stranger. We're not to oppress. We're not to be little, to be raped. Call security on a kid riding a bike in your driveway. No. So then the guy decided to make it a little tougher and put in a few more curves. And then he actually put in some information like, look, stop here, sharp curve. And then at the very end, he put a trophy. And then when you saw the kid ride the next time through, he wasn't quite as shaky. He was riding like a little dragster riding through this course on this driveway. Why create with God? Because when we create change with God, we have an effect on all those around us. We And that need is to give, G-I-V, and recognize the stranger. But the interesting thing about this, this little drag race that he put into his driveway is that not only the little boy began to use the course, but then you'll see a little girl on her trike. Then you'll see some adults on their bikes. It became a giving gift, inviting that stranger in, visiting with that stranger, but not only that, at the very end of this triumphant video of this little boy who can now ride his bike very well, he, his parents, and his dogs wave at the camera. Why create with God? Why create change? Because when we do it for the other, we not only create light, and prosperity for the other. We create light and prosperity for ourselves. We create Salmona, community, tribe. My challenge to you this day is to live that prescription that Jesus gives us in Matthew chapter 25. G I V. Not to protect yourself, to try and make sure that you don't go into damnation or whatever, but so that you can lift yourself up on the rock and bring somebody else up with you. Who do you perceive today that needs a gift for you to give them clothes? The gift for you to give them something to drink when they are thirsty. Who do you perceive today that needs the invitation into your home? Who do you perceive this day that you need to visit in prison or in their sick bed? Why create change? with God. Because when you create change with God, God not only breathes new life into your creation, filling it with light and prosperity, giving you the inheritance of the kingdom, 
But when you create with God, when you create change with God, it is the gift that GIV gives to all those around you and keeps on giving. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Hey, it's Shemai Reed with I Am Refocus Radio. Make sure you go to IamRefocusRadio.com to listen to today's episode. Once again, like we always say, keep God first, stay focused, and peace. I Am Refocus Radio is brought to you by FOO 4 Star and Holy Crab. Foo Four Star is a family-owned Asian restaurant in San Antonio, Texas. We have been a local favorite for Asian cuisine for over 10 years. With nothing but full smiles and fast service, you'll be leaving satisfied. Come on in for some authentic Vietnamese food. Holy Crab is one of a kind Cajun Creole style seafood restaurant located in Universal City, Texas. We offer traditional seafood items as well as chicken and steak. We also offer seafood boils. Come give us a try. You won't be disappointed. You can find these two eateries in Universal City, Texas at 2921 Pat Booker Road.